Welcome back to my workshop. Now today, a bit of an unscheduled video. Uh, I'm in the middle of this project and I now need my planar thicknesser and my planar thicknesser has decided to die. So let's have a look at it, see if we can fix it. Okay, so what I've got here is a 10 inch planar thicknesser. Uh, now in the UK, it's called a planar thicknesser. Uh, in America, I believe it's called a jointer planar. Either way, it planes stuff. Uh, this is cast iron, it's a 10 inch bed. Now looking at this, this one is actually a Fox, uh, but there's a very, very similar design for other manufacturers and they are uh, an SIP or SIP, uh, which is the 01575, an Axminster AC250PT and the Charnwood W583. Now they all look very similar. Now I've not had a look at any of the others inside, uh, but I suspect they're all exactly the same. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's gone wrong with it and then I'll show you how I'm going to fix it. So let's get closer. Okay, so I'm on the floor. Uh, I've replaced the fuse because I know it's blowing fuses. Uh, so I'll just start it up as I would normally and we'll see what happens. Okay, so as usual, push the button. That's it. Okay. So the blade starts spinning and then it just cuts out. Now let's check the fuse. Okay, so I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably don't need for me to go through this process, but I will go for it anyway. Uh, I'm just gonna check the fuse. Okay, so here's the fuse. First of all, check to make sure it's the right rating. Pop it out. Okay, it's a 30 amp fuse, which is good. Move the plug out of the way. Okay, so this is the fuse I suspect is blown. Uh, I have another one here, which I know is good. Uh, okay, so I've got a voltmeter here. It's a digital voltmeter. So what I need to do is switch that onto resistance. So the little ohm sign here. Okay, and this is showing open load. Okay, to make sure it's working, touch the two points together and it gives you a very very low reading okay so that shows this continuity between these two so now what I need to do is just check across my fuse okay oh if I can okay still showing open load okay if I check my in theory good fuse okay so there's a circuit across this one but not across this one so that means that's this is blown. Okay, just a tip here. Don't hold it like this because you'll get a false reading because you're actually measuring the resistance through your body. Okay, so don't hold it with your thumb. Okay, right. So that fuse is blown. This fuse is good. Right, so let's have a look in the machine. Okay, so I've now got the back of the machine. Uh, I've had to take the uh, fence bracket off the top and I think it's three screws either side and this back panel comes off. Now, obviously it's blowing the fuse because it's drawing too much current. Now, why is it drawing too much current? Uh, has the motor seized? Now, the easiest way to check that is, first of all, make sure it's not plugged in. Obviously it isn't because we've got the fuse out. Uh, obviously the motor's here and yeah, the motor turns freely, so it turns freely both ways. So I suspect there's not a mechanical problem as far as the motor is concerned. Um, okay, so next thing is I'm going to pull the motor out so we can have a closer look. Okay, so the motor's held on by four bolts here, which are basically a nut and bolt with a big washer on the outside and a small washer and a spring washer on the inside. Uh, the motor is now out here. Obviously it's still wired in. Uh, this is very heavy, so be careful when you pull it out. Okay, now what I suspect is that these two here, these contain capacitors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly take these off and have a look. 
Okay, so I've got the covers off now and I'm exposing the two capacitors. Now, if you don't listen to anything else in this video, listen to this. Don't touch the live terminals because even though it's unplugged, uh, these capacitors can still hold a charge. And the last thing you want is that discharging into your body because that's going to hurt. Okay, so first thing to do is to check to see if there's any current or voltage still in the capacitors. So what I've done now is I've removed the uh, white one, obviously. Um, and what I've got here is, now the figures you're interested in are, first of all, the CBB60. Uh, so with that number, you should be able to find another one online. Uh, the important numbers are the 25 microfarad and the 450 volts. Okay, and similar on the blue one, Okay, this is a CD60, 275 volts AC, and 100 microfarads. <clears throat> okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the white one first, um, because I happen to have one here. Um, so I'm going to change that first. Now, originally, it was wired in with these plastic key caps, which I don't like at all. So I'm going to solder it in, and then use a bit of heat shrink, um, just to be on the safe side. So I've got my little soldering iron going here. So I'm going to solder those in and then put it all back together and give it a go. Okay, let's get on with that. Right, I've now got the motor back in place. It's very heavy, so be careful. Um, it's got two belts. Now, just a, a tip while I'm here, when you're putting the belt on, put it on the smallest pulley first, then wind it onto the largest pulley. Yeah, job done. If you try and do the other way, if you try and put it on the large one first and then wind it onto the smaller one, it's harder. All right, take my word for it. Okay, right, let me finish tightening up the, uh, the motor and then we'll put the cover back on. Okay, so all it remains for me to do now is put the fuse back in. Um, I'll leave the camera rolling because we never know what's going to happen. Right, let's plug it in. Of all the times, that's the bloody compressor. Right, okay, let's try it. Okay, here we go. Get that off the blade. Yeah, it didn't work. Right, so that means I've now got to change the other one again. Right, it's quite a few days later now and uh, I'm in the middle of another project. So we're in a bit of a mess. Uh, and what's happened is my start capacitor has turned up, so I'm going to try and put that into the uh, planar fixer now. Uh, but it does mean that the planar thickness are here. Uh, I've got to dig it out again and then take it apart. So I better get on. Okay, so I've uh, temporarily fitted the, uh, the new capacitor in here. Okay, I've wired it in briefly. Uh, what I should do is I'll try it first and then if that's okay then I can solder it in properly. Um, I'm going to start this without the cover on. Um, so if you try this just be very careful. Uh, I'll be around the other side of the machine. I've got the blade covered here just in case it does start spinning hopefully. Um, okay so it's all plugged in. All I've got to do now is push the button. All right, we're all clear. 
three, two, one. Well, I'd say that's a success. Look, I'm a happy person. I've now got a plane of thickness of back, uh, which means I can carry on with this project now. Right, okay, uh, what I'll do is I'm gonna wrap this all up now, uh, but while I've got the back of the machine off, I'll probably do a little bit of maintenance, um, give it a bit of a clean out and a hoover out, uh, so it's all nice and sparkly clean on the inside. Okay, so it's all cleaned up inside. Um, while it's here, I'll give you a quick look because you very rarely see the inside of your machines. Uh, and I'll quickly show you how the roller mechanism works. Okay, so you've seen the drive belt here and obviously it turns this, which is the blade, which is the cutty, nasty thing. Um, but the feed rollers, when you're feeding a piece of wood in, uh, there's two rollers that actually draw the wood through. Now on this machine and others of the same make, um, they've got this lever which disconnects those rollers to put more of the energy into the blade. Uh, and just so you can see how it works, when you lose, move the lever, it moves this pulley in contact with the, uh, the motor. Okay, so the motor's spinning and all it does, it rubs on there because there's a rubber tyre on here. Rubs on here and these two here are, are your rollers. Okay, so that's just how that works. So when you disconnect it, it spins but doesn't actually turn that. Okay, let me put this back together. So that's pretty much it now. So my plane was blowing fuses um, and I've changed the run capacitor and the start capacitor. And now, it's working a treat. Okay, plus as well, I've cleaned out the inside. Uh, ironically, putting the uh, cover on the back again that um, is there to protect you. I cut my finger, typical. Um, right, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you're using electrics or working on electrics, don't do it unless you know that you're confident enough to do it. Uh, these things can hold quite a charge. They'll give you a nasty bang. Um, so don't do it unless you know what you're doing, okay? Right, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Uh, and I've ended up uh, running out of words. I've got the cover off now and it's, it, Right, it's quite a few days late. Uh, oh, start again. Of all the times, that's the bloody compressor. Right. <laughs>